So AI, there's been a lot of hype, uh, especially in the accounting software market, both in practice and business. Uh, the, uh, the industry has been, sort of been a ground zero for uh, the development of artificial intelligence. So we'd like to get to the bottom of it a little bit, and we've curated for ourselves a uh, wonderful panel here. We've got Caroline Plum from Fluidly. Hello, Caroline. Hi there. We've, all the way from Australia, we've got Chris Hooper from Acodex, the CEO of Acodex, an accounting firm. Hello. And we've got Damon Anderson, the head of partners uh, at Xero. Thank you for joining us, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So just to dive straight into it, I, just starting with you, Caroline. Um, yeah. So Fluidly uh, is very much sort of defined as being an AI product. That's right. What, 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 does, what does an AI product mean? Like, is there some kind of crazy supercomputer somewhere that, 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 that's doing the work for you? I mean, I think the, th the first thing to remember is that AI, artificial intelligence, is an umbrella term. Yeah. So it encompasses a whole range of algorithms. And our specialty is machine learning using recurrent neural nets. Yeah. And our focus is taking the data that is in accounting packages and forward forecasting that um, for cash flow forecasting, cash flow management. So j just on the point there about, about neural nets, yeah. uh, so that as far as I understand it means that it, it sort of mimics the way that the brain learns? Yeah, so it's a d deep learning technique, yeah. um, which is again a sort of a subset of machine learning. Yeah. And so we use a combination of deep learning, machine learning and statistics to build forecasts using transaction data. Yeah. And our real specialty is um, time series modeling of calendar data, which is quite niche, but that's yeah. what we do. Uh, Chris, I, I, I know that you've you've always had uh, quite a strong interest in this field. Yeah. Uh, starting from about when? Uh, about seven years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, we set up one of the very first like zero first practices in my hometown. Yeah. Um, and we were at the right place, the right time, yeah. on the right product. Um, and I realised the advantage of like you know if I can make more calls like that in terms of like predicting the future, then I was going to really create a defensible business, you know. So I then started obsessing about uh, foresight and future trends in the accounting industry, basically to kind of extrapolate over the next 30 years uh, in order to actually build a defensible business and what I believe the accounting practice of, you know, 2025 is actually going to look like, but start building that in 2015. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's something that I've been obsessing about for seven years. How much, and in that seven years time span, how much has it sort of changed? Um, to be honest, in accounting, I don't think it's actually changed that much, right? I mean, the, the shot heard around the world was really zero kind of breaking into the market. Um, and I was actually saying to a zero rep before that really this is a matter of like uh, onboarding and customer acquisition these days. And I was actually saying to another accountant last night um, that I've been really crying out for something that is really going to break new ground in the accounting yeah. profession insofar as uh, technology is concerned. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm going to be visiting you yeah, after this. Yeah, let's have chat. So Damon, um, uh, zero uh, from, from the murmurs and chats that I've heard uh, is is invested quite a lot of money in, uh, in AI and machine learning. Um, why, why, why is that? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, so uh, I think, you know, when you think about what our business is about, at the core of it, it started out as accounting software for small business. Yeah. And then uh, at Progressive over time, we've really developed and, mo and morphed into a platform. Yeah. Um, but as part of that, so, you know, a big part of what our role is, is to help the small business free up time. Yeah. And so in order to free up time, we, we looked at a lot of things we can do. So as the platform, we connect apps into Xero to help like get the information in more simply. Um, but there's also, like once we have that data, how can we make it as simple as possible and as efficient as possible for a small business? Um, and so the big epiphany was like, you know, small businesses don't know accounting. Accounting is really hard. And so trying to code transactions for a small business that's the sort of thing that really in this day and age we, we shouldn't have to do. Yep. So when we think about AI and machine learning, it's ultimately about how do we create efficiencies for that small business mm -hmm. and remove the need to have to cope with like accounting jargon, accounting terminology. Yep. So deploying machine learning into uh, remove um, account codes from invoices and bills has been like the first step on an evolution to ultimately create greater efficiency through cutting out unnecessary tasks for small business. Yeah. So I mean, at, at present, um AI, I, I feel as if, and feel free to correct me at any point, I feel as if it still has quite a narrow domain in terms of like, its applicability and what it can do. Um, and what I've heard people say is that eventually you'll, you'll, you'll start getting AIs and like software that almost act like your, your digital t 
digital twin and and <laughs> act autonomously. Yeah. I mean, how 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 fits? I suppose for you, Chris, as an accountant, how how comfortable are you with the idea of, of software that can that can almost uh, react to some kind of threat that's merged quickly uh, and without without your oversight? Look, I am extremely comfortable with it at this stage because yeah. it's not actually like self-executing, yeah. you know. A lot of AI that we've played with at a codex is really centered around um, bringing things to the accountant's attention yeah. um, in terms of like notifications and alerts and forecasts and yeah. that sort of thing, which then the human can then exercise some professional judgment and go, do I need to take action on this or can I just snooze that yeah. alert? Um, you know, ask me again in like five years time when it becomes like self-executing parameters yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know it's completely removed from our control um, but I think uh, uh, for the time being um, it, it's not really that uh, that that scary a prospect yeah. so we're big fans of this a guy called Laurence Ferry yeah. who is this Frenchman who invented the autopilot and uh, what autopilot does is continuously monitor all the surroundings and, and dynamically optimize and preempt threats and we see our role as AI is building an autopilot for finances. Yeah. And the important thing about autopilots is that the pilot is still flying the plane. Correct. You know, they are there only, it's only there to help you and to assist you. Um, I mean, it might be reckless to fly without one yeah. as you get bigger, but nevertheless, the pilot's still in charge. So I don't think it's always about substitution. No. And yeah. it's yeah. actually about capability, yeah. enhancement, and superpowers, I think. It's a lot of those things. I mean, uh, you know, the, when you roll it up into the kind of the robots are taking over the world sort of analogy, then you know that's that's what you know it, people oversimplify it and think that way, but if you you know if it's all about for me time horizons. So like yeah. you know uh, it is is the role of an accountant or is the role of financial services you know going to be potentially displaced? Well, actually, in a, in a long enough time horizon, yes. Yeah. But like in reality, um, you know, it is really in its infancy stages. Yeah. And uh, you know some of the most advanced like machine learning like uh, that that you're seeing in products today is like augmenting yeah. the the human element. Yeah. It's absolutely not replacing. I think we're a long way off before we get to that point. But yeah. you know, uh, and and you've also got to introduce this stuff progressively. So absolutely. the recommendations that you talked about, like yeah. that's how we're thinking about it. It's yeah. recommendations, and then slowly but surely you can start to drop the recommendations out when yeah. people get comfortable and confident. Yeah, yeah. it's. Um Interestingly, there's this point where they talk about the, the, the paradox of automation. So you, you, you're saying like, like different functions being automated and uh, these sort of mundane things that people really should be spending time on. But the interesting thing about the, the human who's controlling it, they actually become more critical because it gets more high level. Is, yeah. that, is, that, is that very much how you see it? Yeah, totally. Uh, so um, ultimately, and you know, whether it's AI or machine learning, automation yeah. and uh, simplifying, like you know, connecting data to sources together and all of that stuff mm. is removing the need to do manual tasks. Yeah. And um, if you remove the need to do manual tasks, then you can elevate your role to do uh, things that are way more practical and meaningful. Yeah. Mm. And I always come back to, you know, like there's always that fear of like, what's the role of, um, you know, what will be the role of uh, a bookkeeper or an accountant in the future? And in reality, you know, we come back to what are we here to do? Like what are we as a, pra like a, a business here to do? Create better business outcomes. Yeah. And so creating better business outcomes means leveraging technology and then the, you know, the role of the, the accountant for, from our side will, will change and evolve over time, just as it has for, you know, ever since we, we invented the wheel, you know? Just on that, I've actually spoken to hundreds if not thousands of accounting students from all across the world. Um, and the number one question I ask them is, why did you choose accounting? Yeah? And not a single one of them yet has said to enter numbers into holes all day, right? And honestly, I, I remember back on my time at university, the, the disparity between like the expectations in university and then the reality going into practice, it was like I felt like I'd been lied to, right? Yeah, university sells this like glamorous, you know, you're actually improving businesses and you're yeah. affecting business outcomes. You get into practice and it's like, here's a stack of papers, enter them into this piece of software. Not a single accountant I've met that, that's at college right now wants to be doing that anyway. So I don't think a lot of these activities are going to be missed. <laughs> Sorry, Fluidly's angle on this is quite interesting in regards to it deals with specific, very specifically with, with like cash flow. Yeah. Um, what, what, what is it about cash flow that, that, that you kind of recognize as being a, a very uh, automatable, if that's even a word? I mean, it's not so much the fact that it's automatable, it's the fact that it's the pain point that matters yeah. most to businesses. Yeah. 
So, you know, I'm a, this is my second business. I built a business first of all, and you know, my biggest single pain point was how do we make, manage money coming in and out? And yeah. I think often when you're, you know, picking the flying analogy, when you're building a business, it's a bit like flying through, through fog sometimes, because you've got to always try and see ahead. And I think that's the part that you have a lot of data about what's happened in the past, but not always a lot of data about what's happened in the future. And it's complex, it's time consuming, it's difficult to do, it's lots of transactions, it's highly complex. It's brilliant for a computer. You know, they love that stuff. So uh, it, we actually see the opportunity to solve a pain point using technology. Yeah. But it's the pain point that came first rather than the how. And I, I suppose just as like a sort of final general question for the panel as a whole, why why now? Why I mean, I feel, I feel like we've been talking about like this kind of stuff for like yeah. for ages, and like it seems to be kicking into gear now. Obviously, it's still in its infancy, but like yeah. why, why? Why are we yeah. talking about it all the time? Yeah. I mean, I think there's probably like three or four core reasons why we're talking about it now. Yeah. The first is the introduction of algorithms. Like these deep learning algorithms have really taken place from around about 2010, and that's where we're seeing huge breakthrough. So actually, the algorithms are better, but not only are they better, they're now accessible in cloud format from Google, from Amazon. You can buy into these and focus on applying the algorithm to a domain rather than writing it from scratch. And all that is driving money um, and interest into the area. And finally, data. You know, for the first time, this data is exploding. 90% of all data created in the last two years. So we're really at a point where we can access the data, we've got the algorithms, we've got the interest. You know, that's why we're talking about it all the time. Are you, are you, are you yeah. feeling optimistic, Chris? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And just to echo the, the data thing, if you, from an accounting context, uh, you think about the data that a small business was actually creating 15, 20 years ago, yeah. Like the only data they were recording was accounting stuff, yeah? And that was general ledger, big green cash book. And we, we counted cash and we counted money. That's what an accountant's job was to do back then because that was the, if you're gonna count anything, you count the money in a business, right? Yeah. But now we've had this like data explosion and we can count everything, yeah? And there are patterns and there are correlations, but now we're dealing with so much that we can't even humanly process that much. Um, and that's what we need the machines to do. And I think the last piece um, uh, is really, we've now got the hardware capabilities to actually do that, you know? So, you know, all of these technologies have kind of converged. So that's, that's where we're at right now, is that we've got the hardware, we've got the algorithms, and we're actually producing more and more data. So yeah. why not now? Yeah, and uh, Damon, uh, just as the final question, can you confirm whether uh, Zero's AI is going to destroy us one day? <laughs> destroy us one day? Yeah. It won't destroy you, but it'll save you time. <laughs> and it'll absolutely say we're saving 307 hours per week of accountant's time uh, in, in what we've got at the moment. So no chance of it destroying you. It might, it might, it might destroy your work life because you have so much time back to go, <laughs> go to the beach. That's about it. Uh, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I hope that this has potentially cleared up some misconceptions around the field. Uh, and uh, keep eye out for the rest of our accountings coverage. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you.